So what are the KKT conditions? KKT conditions try to answer the following question. Suppose we know beta and beta zero are the solution of this uh, optimization problem one. What can we see about beta and beta zero? For example, uh, are they satisfy any equality equalities or any inequalities? So let's first uh, look at uh, the uh, solutions uh, solution to a unconstrained uh, optimization. So suppose x minimize fx, and then we know that the derivative of f evaluate at this uh, minimizer should be zero, and that's equivalent equivalent to say that minus the derivative at x at x should be zero, and here. Um, the left-hand side is a minus derivative, means that's a direction we can further reduce the value of f because we know x is already uh, the minimizer, so such a direction shouldn't exist. That means it is zero. So this is often known as the first order necessary condition for, um, for the solution of, f, uh, of this optimization problem. Uh, now, suppose we're going to minimize fx and but subject to some equality constraints. Here, um, instead of a minimize an fx over all possible value of x, we only minimize fx when x in, in what we call some feasible region. Feasible region refers, uh, refers to a set of x values, and, and they satisfy gx is equal to b. And then we can show that if x is a solution to this problem, it must satisfy uh, this equality. The left-hand side represents a direction and that, we, that can further reduce the value of f. And such a direction may not be zero now, um, but it could be a forbidden direction because the right-hand side is a direction. Here, lambda is any real number. The right-hand side is a direction, and it will also change the value of g, and that is not allowed, because then we're going to move out of the feasible region. Now, what about um, minimizing fx with respect to some inequality constraint, like gx is bigger or equal to b? Um, let's assume Right now, the gx is some kind of a concave function. So gx bigger than b going to uh, the feasible region is actually convex region in x. Um, also assume f is um, some is smooth, so we can take derivative. Um, so here we have to differentiate two cases. Suppose x is a solution of this problem, and we have to discuss two cases of x. In case one, x is inside this and uh, convex uh, region, so that means, and um, we can always place a small uh, ball around x, a small neighborhood around x, and the whole neighborhood, if we pick a uh, you know small radius, then the whole neighborhood is inside this convex region. Then, if x is a, a minimizer, we throw back to case one and the derivative of fx should be zero in this case because x is basically an interior point. In case two, um, x is on the boundary of this convex um, region. And then we almost like uh, like back to, sort of back to case two here because now the uh, and when we take the the the, the Direct the derivative of f at this location x, and the left hand side is a is a direction that can minimize fx, but that direction could be a forbidden direction in the sense that, um, the here on the right hand side lambda is always bigger or equal to zero, so the right hand side in is either zero or some direction that will further reduce the value of g, and that's not allowed because. And when x is the boundary and gx is equal to b, if we reduce gx, and then we are uh, getting out of the feasible region. So, um, to some, these two cases actually can be summarized, and um, just by equation one, and this equation and this con the last uh, equality. The last equality um, basically states that 
lambda and in, and this constraint cannot be zero, non-zero simultaneously. So, for example, when g x is strictly bigger than b, we call x is inactive, which is a shorthand and is abbreviation for saying that at the location x, the constraint is not active, and because x is x is almost like an interior point. In that case, lambda must be zero. So you can find out the equation. The first equation is is basically saying the derivative of f x should be zero. Now, when g x is exactly equal to b, and we see x is active, and uh, again it is uh, abbreviation for saying that at a location x, the constraint is is active. We get actually equality constraint, and we throw it back to case two. And you can find out the first equation just saying yes when and in for this case the we want the and the minus derivative of f x is actually equal to a forbidden direction. So and all those four conditions in this red box is known as the KKT conditions for optimization with an inequality constraint. Uh, further, you're going to find out the first equation can be um, rewritten just as a derivative of the Lagrangian function respect to x to be zero. Here, the Lagrangian function is defined to be the objective function minus lambda times the constraint. Now, let's look at how we're going to write the uh, KKT conditions for our problem. Here, let's ignore the dual problem at this moment. And here's our primal problem, and let's define the Lagrangian function. The Lagrangian function ha has two sets of arguments. The first set will be the argument for the primal, which are the um, you know, slope beta and the intercept of beta zero. And the second set of arguments are the Lagrangian multiplier, and lambda 1 through lambda n, because we have n cons inequality constraints. And then the Lagrangian function is defined to be um, the uh, objective function minus the uh, minus lambda times the um, constraint times the constraint, and we reorganize it. We get the uh, and this expression. Then let's work out the KKT conditions. The first condition is the derivative of the Lagrangian function respect to x to be zero. And here, x basically are and, uh, the arguments from the primal, so it's beta and beta zero. And let's first uh, take the derivative of the Lagrangian respect to beta. And for the first one, we're going to get just the beta. And then beta only appear here, so we have sum of i, lambda i, y i, x i, and this is equal to zero. You're going to find out, and we, we got the first equality. And if we take derivative of, uh, with respect to beta zero, we get this one. So both those two correspond to the first condition here. And the remaining three sets of uh, conditions, I just uh, copy and the remaining three from the general KKT conditions. Each of the lambda i's should be bigger or equal to zero. And all the constraints have to be bigger or equal to zero. And lambda i and the constraints cannot be non-zero simultaneously.